Good day, good day everyone, Anatax76 here, just hoping to bring you a little more evidence of how entrenched in our curriculum, gender theory and comprehensive sexuality education are. I also have a clip on the consequences of this once it gets entrenched in the system with um, schools and service providers feeling they have the right to do and say what they want with our children. So this is a paper that comes off the Youth Sexuality Education website which we've um, looked at before and you'll recognise some of these de these names um, in particular Lynn Harrison and Deb Ollis. Now Deb Ollis I've done a video about her attitude towards children, sexuality and pleasure. I will link that below. But this paper is called It's Not All About Sex. Young People's Views About Sexuality and Relationships Education. And this is just a few bits out of that paper. We will go over it in more detail another time or you can go and look at it yourself. It's a very exciting time in the history of sexuality and relationships education in Australia. Australia has a national curriculum that endorses sexuality and relationships education through a positive, strength-based approach, drawing on the World Health Organization's definition of sexuality. Sexuality is a central aspect of being human throughout life and encompasses sex, gender identities and roles, sexual orientation, eroticism, pleasure, intimacy and reproduction. Sexuality is experienced and expressed in thoughts, fantasies, desires, beliefs, attitudes, values, behaviours, practices, roles and relationships. While sexuality can include all of these dimensions, not all of them are always experienced or expressed. Sexuality is influenced by the interaction of biological, psychological, social, economic, political, cultural, legal, historical, religious and spiritual factors. And if you watch my last video, you will find that is almost word for word what they call sexual health. The Australian National Curriculum acknowledges the need to include issues such as gender and sexual diversity, love, intimacy, sexual desire and pleasure, as well as including knowledge and understandings about the physiological, social and sexual health issues that are important to making informed choices about sex and relationships. This signals a huge shift in how sexuality and relationships education has been positioned and taught in the past. Now, one other interesting thing that I thought I'd bring as part of this presentation is this particular finding in their paper. In this study, students were asked to identify with whom they felt comfortable discussing sexual matters. Chil girls ranked their female friends most highly, while boys ranked their male friends most highly. Mum ranked second for both girls and boys, dad ranked third for boys, while girls ranked dad ninth. Medical experts were ranked quite highly by both girls and boys. Teachers were not ranked particularly highly with girls ranking them eighth and boys ranking them seventh. When students were asked to rate with whom they felt uncomfortable discussing sexual matters with, both boys and girls ranked teachers first. But they make them do it anyway. The children aren't asked if they wish to do this, they aren't asked if they're ready to learn this, they are told that this is best for them and their parents have no idea. Just saying. Okay, so the next one I was going to bring you comes from the Australian Journal of Teacher Education. Now the Australian Journal of Teacher Education is from Edith Cowan University. It is supposedly meant to enhance the quality of our teachers' education through the publication of research reports, learned points of view and commentaries, and contributions may address proposals for or descriptions of development in purpose, structure and methodology of teacher education, curriculum issues, changes in schools or general social ideological or political issues relating to teacher education. So the AJTE is indexed in the Web of Science, Scopus and A-plus Education. CS Imago ranks the AJTE as the second top quartile for education journals, journals in the world. And it is 328 out of 914 international education titles and third out of 30 Australian education titles available to our teachers. So this isn't just some Looney Tune 
gender studies advocate um, throwing a paper out there online. So this is from September 2017, English Classrooms and the Curricular Justice for the Recognition of LGBT Individuals. What can teachers do? Um, and I do recommend you go and have a look at my, does your, uh, do you have an activist educator? Because I will link it below. It shows that this um, is ingrained right the way from early childhood education through to our universities. The idea that social justice refers not only to material equality, but also to recognition of and respect for difference is the foundation of Connell's argument for curricular justice. As Connell argues, schools and colleges do not just reproduce culture, they shape the new society that is coming into existence all around us. Social justice in education, therefore, not only concerns equality in the distribution of an educational service, but concerns the nature of the service itself and its consequences for society through time. And just one further point from that paper, which we will, as I said, probably go through a little more another day. This perspective is particularly relevant to teachers who have a significant responsibility for the futures of children in their care and whose actions may have deep and long-lasting effects. Connell's argument underlines the relevance for teachers of an approach to social justice that focuses on the recognition of how groups of students who do not fit the norms may be marginalised or mistreated by educational systems and practices. Connell argued that justice in education requires a set of educational responses to deep diversity, naming sexuality as one of many educationally relevant differences. In this vein, rather than a fixed expression of biology or character, gender is also defined fluidly through the lens of social relations, culture and performance. So isn't that fantastic? So as you can see, social justice is just is in everything. They can inject it into everything. Um, this is just another one. This was actually a reference that they used in that last paper, supporting gender and sexual diversity in high schools, building conversations for LGBTQI human rights in the English classroom. And um, I just want to point out the third one here, the curriculum. What role does the curriculum, official, hidden or null, play in limiting or making possible more LGBTQI inclusive school communities? So the next time they try and tell you that they don't teach anything that you don't have access to, you can turn around and tell them you know that there is hidden or null curriculum. And basically this is the pedagogy that's used, the ideology behind the information that they deliver. And this is what we are seeing. Parents receive a note saying students are going to discuss student mental health. Now that sounds fairly straightforward. We might talk about bullying, we might talk about peer pressure, but that's not what it means to service providers and to your teachers. Okay, they're looking at it from an inclusive and diverse perspective and you need to remember Every time you get something to read it, applying contextual ambiguity, what does it mean to somebody else? Because it will probably have more than one way it can be interpreted. So let's have a look at how this has played out in Massachusetts. Now Massachusetts has had a very active LGBTI activist community. They have done a lot of work in there. They are way ahead of us in this whole political game. Um, and with the introduction of same-sex marriage, things went into overdrive. So this is the sort of thing we need to be on the watch for, okay? With these student groups and youth groups and things like that, they're encouraging our diverse children to participate in. And let me just bring that up. In considering homosexual programs in the public schools, one is always told that the goal is tolerance. It's not about sex, it's about tolerance. It's about civil rights. It's about human rights. It's about anything but sex, so they say. 
But when I recently attended the 10th annual Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network Conference, GLSEN, I heard quite a different story. You should know that this conference was fully supported by the Massachusetts Department of Education, the Safe Schools Program, the Governor's Commission on Gay and Lesbian Youth, and some of the presenters even received federal money. The audio excerpts you hear on this tape were recorded at this GLSEN conference. My experience, and what you are about to hear, was likely not a unique experience. This was my first GLSEN conference, and the majority of the tape you are about to hear was from the first two workshops I attended. To think that I could have been so lucky as to stumble into workshops that are not normal for these gay student teacher conferences is highly unlikely. I would not be surprised if you heard the same things if you attended a GLSEN conference in your own hometown. Some of what you are about to hear is extremely explicit. This tape is intended for parents and adults concerned with the homosexual agenda in our schools and should not be listened to by children without parental supervision. If it's all about tolerance, why is the following question necessary? Topic versus swallowing. I don't know about the calorie count of cum. All right, is it rude? Let's ask that question. Is it rude not to swallow? No. No? No. no. So it's, it's in good federal etiquette to let you know you sit out? Tolerance. You just heard a public employee ask 14-year-olds if it was rude to spit rather than swallow during oral sex. Okay, the so first question is, what's spitting? Now, a, a little known fact about this, you know, is that you don't make a fist like this. When they do it, it's like this. This is a lot easier than this. <laughs> It's about tolerance? If Gay Straight Alliances are not about sex, why are the people who run Gay Straight Alliances telling students about fisting? What you did not see is the man leading the discussion positioning his hand and showing 14-year-olds how to insert their entire hand into the rectum of their sex partner. Clearly, the goal is not tolerance, rather breaking down the natural sense of right and wrong of a child, putting him into an exploratory mode and actually encouraging the child to put himself into a potentially life-threatening situation. And what we do is have students go up to the board and brainstorm different responses, such as, um, if I was to come to terms with my bisexual identity, I might be willing to have this with that word. I might be willing, I might be willing to have um, sex more often if I found someone who was actually gay, lesbian, or bisexual because I would think that they would be the only one. Sometimes students say, um, you know, I would want to have sex just to prove if I was gay or not because I figure if I had sex then I would know. And then they, or they say, well, I would have sex with not gay sex because I want to prove that I'm heterosexual and not gay and I want to see and I want to sample. I mean, there are a number of different responses. The impetus of doing this is once again to put them in an exploratory mode, not only for themselves, but also for the possible motivations and situations that other students can be in that they're going to be doing outreach to through the various events and through the one-on-one -on -one outreach in the classroom. Department of Education employees help children to get into an exploratory mode with their sexuality. They assist exploring teens to get together and to have sex to find out whether or not they are homosexual. Again, the people who come into your children's school to discuss homosexuality intend to put children into an exploratory mode to obtain a don't knock it until you try it attitude about homosexual sex. Not only do Department of Education employees help these children get together to have sex, but they discussed how sex might be better. Perhaps everyone should pierce their tongues. Is oral sex better with tongue rings? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and there you have it. A tongue ring is a metal stud that is often pierced straight through your tongue. Here, 14-year-olds have already learned that a tongue ring makes oral sex better. In order to get high school students to talk so freely about sex, you have to desensitize them while they are still young. If you can convince them while they are young that homosexuality is normal and romantic, they will have no objection to it when they are older 
and considering having sexual experiences. The following recordings were made in a workshop entitled The Struggles and Triumphs of Including Homosexuality in a Middle School Curriculum. One of the purposes of this workshop was to demonstrate to homosexual teachers ways to get around the roadblocks that parents, principals, and administrators set up to protect children from the moral depravity of homosexuality. Twelve-year-old children, who ought not even be thinking about sex, wrote on the blackboard comments about homosexuality which reveal how little they actually understood what it was. For homosexuality, they said, don't knock it until you've tried it. Like, if you haven't tried a vegetable, how do you know you don't like it? <laughs> that was interesting. And, um, also, when did you decide to become a lesbian? And have you ever considered becoming normal? Questions like that, and they're playing the role in the presentation. Don't knock it until you try it. Seventh grade students equated trying homosexual sex with trying different vegetables as if the two were comparable. No seventh grader makes these types of statements on her own. She doesn't even know what she should be trying. This teacher has indoctrinated her seventh grade, twelve year old students to believe that experimentation is the best way to learn about their sexual orientation. In this workshop, the lesbian teacher presenter let the group watch a video she had her seventh grade students prepare to convince the administrators, principal, and fellow students that homosexuality was normal and not about the sex. Seventh grade students are in no place to make determinations about sexual orientation. Additionally, teachers have no right to make students participate in a curriculum which will override the moral choices of their parents. So now what I'm going to do is show you one of the student videos they did on homosexuality. I am on the name of a woman and there are going to prove that there is nothing wrong with being a homosexual. At the end of our program, for the last program, there will be a series of questions in which we will pause the video to see if you can get the answer right before we actually answer it. As the MCAS scores show, a comprehension of history is lacking in Massachusetts schools. However, this lesbian teacher has found time enough to teach her students about the Greek acceptance of homosexuality. You are about to hear a 7th grade student tell her 12-year-old peers that celebrated homosexuality has a glorious history. Did you catch that? A seventh grade student just told her peers that it was normal for an adolescent boy to be sexually mentored by an older and wiser man. We specifically tell our children not to accept candy from strangers. We specifically teach them to say mommy's in the shower if no adult is home. But here, a Massachusetts teacher tells her adolescent students that they should be honored if they were sodomized by an older, wiser man. The actions of this teacher are reprehensible and without excuse. A famous poem in homosexual circles called The Homoerotic Order by Michael Swift states, We shall sodomize your sons, emblems of your feeble masculinity, of your shallow dreams and vulgar lies. We shall seduce them in your schools, in your youth groups, wherever men are with men together. Your sons shall become our minions to do our bidding. They will be recast in our image. They will come to crave and adore us. Before today, this poem was easily dismissed as the rantings of a rabid homosexual activist. Today, it is fulfilled by Department of Education employees. The Department of Education and many school districts around the state fully endorsed what was taught at the GLSEN Teach Out Conference. It is not about safe schools. It is not about human rights. Thanks to our Department of Education, we have proven that homosexuality is about sexualizing your children. So 
Australians, I can't say enough. We are running out of time to get protections in place for conscientious or religious objectors to this ideology being forced on our children from the time they are infants. I've just read that we use the WHO definition. You really should go and have a look at the WHO documents and the UN documents because they are the resource behind all of our sexual education. In fact, <laughs> the UN is behind the majority of our civics education, social education, sexual education, environmental education, we're lining up with everything that they want us to know, not what we need to know and not what our children need to know for them to have a future that benefits them um, in freedom and um, safety. So please, I, I implore you to, to have a look at these things and come and stand with us on the 21st of April. Write letters to your ministers, speak to your schools, let them know you are watching, speak to your teachers individual teachers, the politics of your individual teachers are going to have a massive impact on your child. And if you don't know what their beliefs are, you don't know what they are injecting into your child's vulnerable little sponge-like mind. Anyway, once again, thanks for hanging with me. Please take an interest in our future. We've only got so much say and it's getting to the point where our speech is going to be enforced. Our speech is going to be dictated to us and we're not going to be able to do anything about it because it will be against the law. Strike a light. Good day, good day. And how you go and just say good day, good day, good day, and you'll be right.